So apparently show buzz is still down. Huh. Remember all those times that we had problems with our website? And usually, like, 24 hours later, we managed to get back at worst. Yeah. We're still waiting on Wednesday's chart. Put in a help ticket. It's it's Tuesday. Yeah, where's their help desk? Six days and we don't have a, a chart yet? Holy smokes. Anyway. So here's a quick raw report, everybody, from uh, last night, for those of you that are uh, just can't wait for this. So uh, the show was actually not too bad. We had an MVP promo where Bobby Lashley is issuing an open challenge for later on tonight. They spent three hours teasing that it was going to be for the title. They announced that it's for the title. And then MVP says, whoa, 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 it's not for the title. So for three hours, if you waited around to see a title match, boy, did they get you in the end. We had AJ versus Elias, where AJ worked as a total babyface. Babyface, babyface, babyface. Guy in the Thunderdome says, make sure you boo AJ. AJ's supposed to be a heel. I don't know what's going on. So they go forever. The match is boring. And then Jackson Riker yanks him off the apron for the DQ. At this point, I was struggling to even stick with the show. Then we do a riddle promo backstage where Kofi Kingston challenges Randy Orton. And then we had another horrible Alexa Bliss segment, which honestly was so horrible, I turned off the show. Because it's my job, I turn it back on afterwards. But, like, talk about a breaking point. We're still in hour one. I can't take this show. Angel Garza and Drew Gulak. Angel Garza wins and then stuffs a rose down his throat. We have a truth promo, and then he's rolled up by Tazawa. Like, at this point, the show is the biggest waste of time. It's horrible. Finally, it slowly begins to turn around. We have Randy versus Kofi, which at least was okay, although it had a trombone distraction finish, and Kofi rolls up Randy Orton for the pin. I mean... Is bad, but compared to hour one, it was it was at least I would go as far as to say tolerable. Like when you're looking forward to the trombone distraction finish, uh, as compared to other things on the show, they they set me up for this one. I think to be uh, to to not you know whatever. Lana, Naomi, and Dana and Mandy have this promo, and Charlotte shows up, and they agree that Charlotte will face Oscar tonight. If Charlotte wins, she gets a shot at Rhea, but they don't say what happens if Oscar wins. Because I think the answer is nothing. <laughs> we have Natty and Tamina versus Nia and Shayna for the tag titles. I don't know what I was saying about how the show turned around because this also was bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Alexa comes out with her doll and uh, magic occurs. Shayna gets distracted by fire and then she gets pinned. So Natty and Tamina... And by the way, Natty and Tamina in the segment with Alexa, they were disrespectful to Alexa. Alexa was mad at them, yet Alexa still helped them win. And she went after Shayna for the second straight week, and I don't even know why. Show was bad up to this point. Then we add Sheamus and Ricochet. Now the bad is, the storyline yesterday is that Sheamus beat Ricochet clean... And then Ricochet stole his hat and jacket, attacked him from behind, but he's supposed to be the baby face. He then stole his jacket and hat again today. He's a thief. He's an admitted thief. The only one that calls him out on this is the heel announcer. The baby face announcers are acting like he's not a thief, even though he's admittedly a thief. All of this sucks. Now, the good news is they had a match which was very good. So this match, uh, Sheamus beat him. Uh, with the bro kick, he kicked his head off. This was the best match on the show thus far. Like, if you just want good wrestling, this was worth watching. But again, Sheamus, the total babyface in this scenario, but we're told that we're supposed to boo Sheamus and cheer Ricochet. I cannot wait for fans to come back. I can't wait for fans to be able to boo and cheer who they want and not have some guy in the back pushing buttons. All throughout the show, we have various people saying that they're going to cheer or they're going to uh, challenge Bobby Lashley later on tonight, including Mason T-Bar. We had Charlotte and Asuka. There were a couple of botched spots. But again, this ended up being a very good television match. And Rhea Ripley was out there. The story they told you was that Rhea cost Charlotte the match, but she actually didn't. 
There was one bit of distraction, but then Charlotte took over again. Charlotte goes for the figure four on Asuka. Asuka rolls her up and pins her. So Charlotte will not immediately get, be getting, well, in storyline, she won't immediately be getting a championship match. But I think we all know that Charlotte is getting the next championship match against Rhea Ripley in a singles. But this was a very good in-ring match. Morrison and Damian Priest in a lumberjack match. I mean, it was much better than the match with the zombies. I wouldn't call it a great match. Uh, it was it was fine. In fact, some of it was even good. Priest hit a middle rope Hurricane Rana. Hit his, uh, whatever it's called, see the lights, watch the lights, look up at the lights. Shoot the lights. Shoot. What lights is it, everybody? Uh, Someone help me out here. Catching trails off lights. Um, hit UFO the lights. lights. Hit the lights. Hit the lights. Even though the guy goes down. Like, usually you hit the lights on a backdrop. Shelton promo, he beats up Cedric for being uh, disrespectful. And then after three hours, the guy to accept the open challenge is Kofi Kingston, who has already wrestled. They do a match. I mean, the match is all right. And then uh, MVP decides that he's going to hit uh, Kofi with his his, uh, walking stick, his cane. (laughs) But Drew comes out, he takes the cane. Drew hits Lashley. Kofi Kingston pins Bobby Lashley. That's the end of the show. Only the fifth time that Bobby Lashley's been beaten in a year and a half. I couldn't even believe he was beaten four other times. I really couldn't believe that one of those four times, he lost clean to Ricochet. You guys remember that? Yeah. yeah, because they wanted to set up Ricochet for Bobby Lashley. And so, I mean, they gave Ricochet more than they gave Cesaro. Just, Ricochet actually got to beat somebody. He beat Bobby Lashley and then was brutalized and killed by by Brock Lesnar. But So I guess we're going to get at least one Kofi championship match. And then Drew McIntyre and Lashley is clear of the direction there. But, I mean, there were ups and downs on the show. The first hour and a half was a big down. But the second hour and a half had some good wrestling. So I can't say like, oh, it was one of the worst Raws I've ever seen. It was just raw. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle still exciting you? Bro, I don't even know where to get started. I mean, he hasn't turned on the guy yet. Not yet. I mean, they set up something that like was new and interesting and seemed fun. But you can see it's all, like, it was designed clearly so that Randy Orton could RKO Riddle. Or, I mean, there is the option that Riddle could turn heel. That's true. Because, I mean, you know what we need when fans come back is for Riddle to be a bad guy. Well, I mean, I, I don't even know what's going on. I can't even, I can't, I can't wrap my head around any of this. But, I mean, I got to be honest. As it stands right now, I would figure that Riddle and Orton... They are, it's like AJ and, and Omas. Like, how are they not baby faces in front of people, no matter what they try to do, no matter what their intentions are? Like, nobody is going to boo them. It's nobody. not just that. And it's like we saw AJ them. Is, we saw them at WrestleMania in front of people. They were not booed. It was not an aberration based on how the match was booked. And everything that they have done since that point has had them in the position as baby faces. But yeah. for some inexplicable reason, they've got to be heels. I don't get it. it. It's because it's impossible for them to do what they're doing, which is AJ do all of that work. To make a hot tag to somebody, it's imp- it, it just psychologically it's not going to work. And forget about even I mean, the thing with Omas is he's got that Sid Vicious thing. Now, granted, he's not Sid Vicious, but he's got that thing where since he's not doing anything because they're afraid for him to do anything, that he people are looking at him to do his one big move, where the tree slam. I can't even remember what it is, but like like that, they just want to see. It's like Sid power bombing somebody. No matter whether he's supposed to be cheered or booed, people are going to cheer because they just want to see him come in and wreck somebody and leave. So you know, maybe they're going in that direction. And Jackson Riker. And- and Elias was like step one to that, but I, I I don't know. You know, they they definitely they could use AJ Styles for real for real on the babyface side of the ledger, whether he's teaming with Omos or not. So I would love to see them go in that direction. What's incredible to me is like I, I mentioned this before. I want fans back. As much as people don't like the look of the show, the look of the show to me 
ranks below this uh, this fan thing in terms of problems. I have watched a year and a half of WWE where they have gotten the opportunity to do whatever they want and have the fans boo and cheer exactly how they want. And it's not making for a better show. I want fans to come back and let them know what they think about AJ and Omos and and you know whoever else is supposed to be a heel but they're booked as a baby face or whatever. I can't wait for fans to come back. And by the way on that note, we talked about this yesterday. So, uh Money in the Bank is going to have fans and uh Matt Men's Andrew Zarian, our own Andrew Zarian says uh Friday, July 16th SmackDown is indeed the first non-WrestleMania show with fans. So that's when they're coming back. Friday, July 16th for SmackDown. Then, of course, they'll be there for the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, and then they will be there for Raw. He has also noted that uh, there will be new stages, new entrance ways, and, uh, and that's it. That's when everything goes back to, quote, normal. There may still be uh, mildly limited capacity. Who knows by July? Uh, a lot of this will be wherever you, you uh, live, by the way. If, if they go to Seattle and Seattle says you can only be 50%, that's what they'll do. But that's when the fans are coming back. That's when I will have a party. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.